Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle, also my kitchen, but you can just ignore that part. And if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you for still being here. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing aside from that I need to address all of the new plants that I've bought <laughs> over the last few weeks. So two of which are these beautiful philodendron white nights. So there's two in each pot and I really just want to get in there and see what the roots are looking like and decide what we want to do. Like, I genuinely just don't know. I don't know if I, cause these ones are really nice. I don't know if I want to, I might just keep three and pop them all up together and like get rid of this one here that doesn't have as much variegation, but it definitely has like some good potential for variegation. I don't know. We're going to get in there and see what's going on. Also, my philodendron spiritus sancti is not looking great. It literally like melted all of its leaves. You can see right here, um, which is why it looks so dry. I've been afraid to water it but it definitely needs to be watered. And then I think I'm gonna put it in a prop box. I don't know, but I do wanna like just pull it out and see if we can see a root ball. And then I do also have, <laughs> the cats are over there playing if you hear noise. I gave them catnip this morning and I threw all their toys all over the floor. So they're just like going nuts. Um, I also rescued this staghorn fern for eight dollars if you guys remember that plant shopping video and i'm curious to like kind of get in here and see what's going on too but i'm also kind of tempted to just leave it but maybe replace the soil with like better soil i genuinely don't know what to do i mean the plant coming out of here looks healthy and somebody said that it's normal for them to go brown like this but it's like crispy and brown so I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't want it to die. So there is that. And then I also have this Aglionema. So I guess these are all like my big box purchases recently. I also have my Schismatoglottis in the shower. I don't think I'm gonna get to that one today because I'm still not 100% on like what I wanna do with it. And it's a pretty big plant so I really just I'm trying to be realistic with the amount of, of stuff that I'm giving myself to do today. So this Aglionema that I don't know the name of, um, literally doesn't say it anywhere. It just says Aglionema and then it says Aglionema again. So it's an Aglionema Aglionema. Thank you for that. It was very helpful information, Costa Farms. I just like knowing. Um, it's not like I don't know how to care for it, but this one has absolutely gorgeous variegation. I don't know if you could tell this new leaf has like kind of lighter green minty variegation on it. Um, you can see it kind of like on the underneath of the leaves to the variegation. Some of it is whiter than others like this plant for sure. So. I'm thinking I might separate because there's two plants in here and um, gift this other half of it to a friend of mine if she wants it. But again, I just kind of got to get in there and see what's going on because I don't want to keep it in this wick and grow container. I was thinking I might actually move this schismatoglottis to this wick and grow container because I don't love self-watering pots, but that is definitely like a thirsty plant and I don't want this container to go to waste. It's not like ugly or anything. It doesn't look like they're Band-Aid pots, thankfully. So, although they did come out with Wick and Grow ones that look like those and I, I just really don't know why. It's pretty terrible. But <laughs> we're gonna get in there and see what's going on. 
with this plant because I'm not gonna risk um, losing this one the way I have previously by not checking on the roots of my Costa Farms plants or any plant really from a big box store. And that one's just really beautiful. I just don't have a lot of space, so I feel like I don't need to keep uh, both of them. But these white knights, you guys, are really hard. It's really hard uh, not to keep them all because I do, I have like the tiniest little moss pole. I need to get another one, but these aren't tall plants, so it should be fine for now. I would like to pop them all up together um, into one of these clear pots probably and just get them started up a pole so I can have a nice big full mother basket that I can take lots of cuttings from. So that is the plan and that's probably like the, the meat and potatoes of what we need to do today. Um, I've got this gorgeous, gorgeous, I can't speak, <laughs> beautiful repotting that from Mats by Cat. I can leave it linked down below for you guys if you want to check it out. She makes really beautiful ones. I have two. This is the more iridescent one she calls Mermazing. It always comes up really yellow on camera, but it's actually more like purple and blue when you look directly at it in person. But when the light hits it, it looks yellow, but it's really beautiful. And I love it. It's been really sturdy for me. I have another larger one that's black with glitter and I love them both. And I need more because I use these when I water my plants too. I'll put it next to the sink. And as I water everything, I let it drain out in here, which is why the other one is over there because it has the plants in it that I just watered the ones that I just unboxed from um, Jax's Jungle with you guys a couple days ago. So let's get in here. They use like the worst mix. They told me they don't use peat anymore, but it's basically the same thing in terms of how it holds on to moisture. It's just not Look at it. It's so fluffy. It's not good. Not a fan. So I'm excited to see what goes on in here. Okay, I see some good roots. Try to get some of this dirt back into the pot. You can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Um, let me try and like tilt you down. Okay, <laughs> that's better. You can actually see what I'm doing now. Um, Oh, I got dirt on my face. Okay, so you can see this soil is just like really fluffy. Which like, and there's fungus that's coming out of it. Gross. It just, it holds on to moisture way too much for a philodendron. Aeroids like to have like a nice chunky mix. Oh, man, I should have used my bigger repotting mat for this. And it's in a plug. Okay, they're both in a plug. So it looks like they're just shoving two plugs into each pot. And these, although people love to call them death plugs, that is not necessarily true. Yes, it can kind of suffocate the roots, but this plant you can see is growing roots just fine outside of it and through it. Um, but I am just going to like gently, very gently tear open at least like one side of it so that I can break it up a little bit because this will um, degrade over time and you don't want to pull out all of the roots that are attached to it. But it is good to just like break it up a little if you can, but don't go crazy yanking on it is the point that I'm trying to make. There's not even a lot of roots inside the plug. They're like mostly outside of it, probably because they like the oxygen outside better. <laughs> but just a hunch, I get that that's a really easy way to grow plants. So I'm not shading anybody by any means. Um, I have some just like stems or petioles here that don't have 
leaves on them. So I'm just taking those off. I haven't like cleaned these up or anything at all. I've sprayed them down, but that's it. I haven't like really given them a proper clean because they are going to go up in the greenhouse and I have my beneficials up there. So I'm not going to be using any kind of like insecticide. So I've just had these um, off to the side and I did spray them down, but they've been in quarantine. So, okay, I am able to get like most of this off of here, which is good and not lose the roots. But, um, piece and leave the rest so don't go crazy like I said if you can't get this cloth fabric mesh whatever thingy off the roots it will break down over time so it's okay to leave some of it but I at least broke it up and opened it up so that the roots can breathe and I'm just gonna repeat repeat this process with all four of these plants i'm just kind of gently breaking it in half and letting it out crash what are you doing don't you scratch that couch sir Okay, so I got all of the uh, dirt, well, as much of the dirt off the roots and the little mesh thingies as possible. As you can see, I still have some on because there's a whole bunch of roots like going through it. And if I yank this, then I risk losing all of these great secondary roots this plant has grown. Look at that, that's amazing. I'm not gonna ruin that that is going to be completely fine i broke them up i ripped them where there was um i tried to show you where there were like no roots in the way so i do still have some attached here in some places but i have all this excess here and it is really easy to just tear it off so it's okay to have a little bit still stuck on there as long as the roots are able to breathe so they all kind of have a little bit still stuck on there so i'm thinking that i'm gonna keep this one separate since it's the lowest variegation um and let somebody else have that one but i'm thinking that i am gonna keep these three and pot them up together. Hopefully this one will get some of its variegation back. If not, we'll propagate it. I mean, look at the petioles on there and all those beautiful white stripes. So I'm sure we'll be getting more variegation soon. Oh man, I've made such a mess here. Okay, I'm gonna try and get rid of this back into the pot here so that I can mix up like my good soil. I literally got it all over me. I got it in my mouth, in my hair, cause it's so light and fluffy. It's fine though. Everything is totally fine. I just don't want any of these like fertilizer balls or anything getting in the way. Absolutely love love these mats 
She's located in Massachusetts too, if you're local. I consider that like a local business. I like supporting uh, people that are close by. Okay. Got rid of that. <laughs> So that I can actually have somewhere to put these. Honestly, they would all fit right back into this pot totally fine, but I am thinking that this one would be better. What do you guys think? I love these. I got these off of Amazon. You guys always ask me. I'll leave them linked down below. Um, they come in three sizes. It's a little bit harder to find the small ones like these. Uh, but when I do, I try to snag them because they're just so good for aeroids. Got those, all those vents on the sides. Uh, but that is too small for what we need. Today, I'm gonna put probably like my philodendron esmeral dents in there that you guys have seen. I'm gonna do like an update on all of my equigenera plants uh eventually maybe in like another week or two to let you guys know where they're all sitting at but i'm thinking now that maybe i might just put it back into this trending tropicals container because it takes up less space and i only have one of these left and i'm gonna need it for other plants so I think we're just gonna reuse this pot because it doesn't have as as much of a root system as I thought it would. And these aren't even ceramic anymore, by the way. They're plastic. In case nobody noticed, we're still paying the same price for ugly pots, but they're just plastic now instead of ceramic. Plastic. So that's fun. Okay, soil, soil, soil. I'm gonna go through what I use really quickly in case you are new here, new to the chaos here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to my jungle. Okay, Espoma organic potting mix. This is what I use for my base. And what I like to do so that I know how much soil that I need is mix it right into the pot that I'm gonna be using because I don't pre-mix my soil. I uh, like to custom make it every time, but you absolutely can buy it. I'm gonna put in some worm castings. You absolutely can buy it um, already mixed. These are the worm castings that I'm using. They're linked down below. All of this is linked down below on Amazon. Um, I need my chunky perlite though. This you can pick up at Lowe's, but if you can't find it, you can also get it on Amazon. It is orchid bark, um, perlite, and charcoal. So I'm gonna need a nice, good pile of that. And then my favorite, <laughs> We have my Chunky Perlite from Soul Soils. This I will absolutely leave linked down below for you, but I can do you one better and pin it to the top um, of the comment section so that you can check out their pre-made mixes if you don't want to mix it yourself or you can just grab whatever amendments you need. Their products are literally just top quality, premium stuff. And I love their, I mean, like, come on, that is a piece of perlite. Nobody needs it to be that big, but the fact that it is that big is just mind boggling. So I will break it into like smaller pieces. It's not as dusty, which is nice, but still super chunky. They're not all that size. They're like normal sized, <laughs> but they're really big and I love it. Absolutely love it. You can always crush it down more to suit whatever you need. And I would have, this is the biggest bag <laughs> that they have or else I would have a huge supply of this. Trust me. But like I said, they do have like their own pre-made uh, stuff. If you don't want to mix it, they have LECA, they have um, all of the things. So 
I think this is enough, but I gotta check it out. Mix it up. Might throw a little bit more bark and perlite in there. Maybe just a little more perlite. Just love this. Love this. So I'll just give it a little squeeze usually before I stick it in there. It was just so hard for me to find like a coarse perlite online. It was becoming such a task. Okay, I don't think this is going to be enough. Grab another scoop of espoma. Get it all mixed in there. Okay. Let's do this. I do have some of the ceramic ones, but this is going up in the greenhouse where I'm not gonna see it anyway. So that's the only place I ever use these. There's still some roots stuck to the bottom. Just gonna put a little bit on the bottom here. This is gonna need to go in the middle. This is going to be difficult to do by myself. Okay, this one can face this way. This one can face this way. And this one, I guess, can go this way this leaf is damaged anyway. Maybe, potentially, that will work. I don't know how to go about this. i start with just like getting one where I want it and then move from there. Get this guy propped up. And then this one should go this way. Put that leaf in there. I'm making such a mess. <laughs> Make a mess. Almost there. I've been putting this off for like the whole two weeks that I've had these. And now I'm so glad that we're getting it done together, you guys. Hopefully you're getting some of your repotting done with me. I do like to top it off with bark. I think it just like looks nice. Um, I don't know, it just like looks better. I use it as like, I guess a top dressing to a degree. Um, if you shove it in there right too, it can help hold your plants in place. Once these get, like once our roots get established in there, it'll start to hold itself up better. Um, obviously, hopefully <laughs> it'll attach to the pole too. This one's kind of crooked and I don't like it. So let's give you a little twist twist. And then I'm going to give it a nice good water to get everything settled and clean the leaves. But that is our finished, our finished product. Um, it's definitely not like the cutest right now. It looks good over here kind of, but once it starts to grow, it's going to look really, really nice. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to stick it back here for now so that it's out of the way. I'm not 
don't add. It's cute. It could be cuter, but it's cute. And then I have this one that I'm just going to pot up. I'm going to do it off camera though. I'm just going to pot it into something normal sized. Um, and then see if anybody wants it. So I'll probably just throw it up on the website, but I will just let it sit in soil. So we're going to, if you missed it, we're going to Tennessee. I'm going to just toss it right back in here for right now, just so it doesn't flop over or like die. Um, we're going to Tennessee next weekend, so I don't know if I'm going to be putting anything up until we get back. But I do have like a ton of propagating that I need to do. My monster at Esqueleto has um, taken over my greenhouse. <laughs> so um, the next plant that I want to do is this Aglionema. I have no clue what I'm potting it into, so I should probably figure that out, but I need to see what the root ball looks like. So let's get in here. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I guess it kind of holds like just a regular nursery container, which is nice. Ooh, I see some roots coming out of the bottom. But this one's probably in a plug too. Uh, yeah, it's in one of those plastic ones, <laughs> which are like not great. I think this, oh, no, there's two, two plastic. Oh my goodness. And the roots have come out and gone everywhere. I mean, they're very healthy roots. This, this soil is literally just like mud. Oh my gosh straight up mud. Oh man, I'm gonna have to cut these to get them out. And they're like attached to each other. Oh man. Yeah, like ones. <laughs> so this is fun. A root came out of the side of this one and grew in through the top of this one. So this is exactly why I wanted to get in there. Oh, Ooh, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Um, this is exactly why I wanted to get in there, essentially. Because I will probably just keep the one plant. And, uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, pulling the roots out. Oh, it's done it on both. Oy vey. Uh, I mean, they're thick roots at least, so they sh they're like, they're hardy roots, so they shouldn't really, like, break or anything. But I am going to cut this instead of, oh man, my fingers are so gross. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this instead of like trying to pull all the roots out of it. <coughs> Blech, that just went in my mouth. Ugh. Gross. Okay, I'm gonna get in here without cutting roots. being very gentle and trying to cut the plastic all around. Oh my goodness. So that maybe it'll be a little easier to just like pull it out. Okay, 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 okay. We got this. It's just those secondary roots we gotta watch out for. We don't want to lose any by being aggressive for no reason. Like we already lost a couple. Oh my God, dirt all over me. Like in my eye and in my mouth. Okay, go. 
one half off. I mean, it's like impossible not to lose any, but I'm trying really hard to just like not lose a bunch. Some of these are just really tangled up in here. But if you just gently go in and pull one at a time, they kind of look like rice noodles. Like the consistency of rice noodles. <laughs> so like they're thick, but they're delicate. Okay, we did it. I gotta get this terrible mud off of here. This Wick and Grow container, I'm just gonna place off to the side because I am gonna probably put, like I said, the whatever I keep of the Schismata Glottis in there. I'm just genuinely terrified to even repot it. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I just have this little one. It's not big enough. It should be good for the, no, that's not big enough either. I need bigger pots. This might be like way too big. But I think I had an Aglionema in here from Costa Farms. Thought it might be cute for now because they genuinely don't even know what like kind of cover pot I would use for this. That's a solid question. I mean, have this really pretty one that I got at World Market. So, will you fit in here? Yeah, but they're like too similar of a color, right? I don't know if I like that. I mean, this is a good size pot for it, I guess. I just have to find a cover pot. Um, and then I need a smaller one. Okay. I guess that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Final decision is going in here. No, that's too small too, isn't it? Because I wanted to put it in here. In this little terracotta. I mean, it probably would be better for this one. It's just like not that deep. It's not that deep. Ah, oh, fine. It's going in that one wanted it to go in this cute terracotta but that's not gonna happen mix up some soil Leonima. Um, pretty excited to watch this one grow and thrive. It is gorgeous. Look at the variegation on there. Absolutely stunning. Love it so much. Too bad I can't fit in there. <laughs> but I am going to put this smaller one in here so at least one of them can go in here but I am probably going to be sending that one to my friend. Um, I haven't asked her yet if she wants it, but um, I'm assuming she will because she loves Aglionema like me. But if for some reason she doesn't, like she found one for herself already, um, then I'll probably just throw it on the website for cheap. And 
and then that's it i think i'm gonna like call it quits because we've been here for a while i mean i'm gonna fast forward through some of this for you but i've been here for like an hour doing this and i'm just not in the mood to do it anymore and i have tons of watering to get done today so i'm gonna do that with you in another video probably because I have to get everything ready. I gotta water it now so that I have enough time to let them dry out before I water them again right before I leave. Um, we're only gonna be gone for like a long weekend but still don't want to risk it because even when I get home I'm usually pretty tired from traveling and I don't want to water all my plants so that'll give me a couple of days to get settled in when I get home without having to worry about watering everything obviously I check on everything when I get home but I don't want to have to do a bunch of plant chores so there is aglionema number two so I have a little excess um of my good soil here so i'm just gonna put it back in the espoma bag because i am done repotting for today i'm over it <laughs> That is enough for me. I got um, two of these taken care of, three technically at least. So I am happy with that. Let me turn you back up. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So yeah, let me show you again what everything is looking like. This is my philodendron white knight she's definitely looking like a bit of a mess right now but she's gonna sort herself out especially once all the leaves get to turning the same way um i know this one is broken but i'm just leaving it because it's still like providing nutrients for the plant so i'm just gonna leave it alone but that is my philodendron white knight that will hopefully settle in really nicely to this pot up in the greenhouse i'm going to give it a nice thorough watering and clean and then get it up there with all of its uh brothers and sisters or cousins i don't know i've got the princess and the um the wizard now we have a white knight to add to our collection and then i'm so obsessed with this <laughs> cleonema you guys look at how beautiful it is isn't that gorgeous absolutely love this plant so stunning and now instead of the one i have two the variation on this one is just different like i didn't see any other ones with this white on it it's got white on some of these older leaves and you can see this new one like i said comes in like kind of minty on this side is lighter green um and it's just really cool you can even see it on the undersides of the leaves so i'm definitely glad that i snagged this one i'm so obsessed with this newest leaf that it put out and i can't wait to see like if that's the color is that the color it's gonna keep because there is a lot of like lime green on here there's silver on here there's white on here like what I just don't know what more you could want from a plant it's really really beautiful so this one has like you can see that more neon green going down the middle uh, see it looks so cute in the terracotta why wouldn't you fit i may need to go buy more terracotta <laughs> so anyway that is it for this video hopefully you enjoyed hanging out with me today and doing some repotting of my new plants that i've picked up recently at the big box stores let me know in the comments below if you have picked up any of the new plants that have been coming out this spring um spring is almost over 
let me know what you got and what you're looking forward to finding. Hopefully you guys are able to find these plants as well. If not, I got you. I have this white knight, white, yes, white knight <laughs> here up for grabs. If anybody wants it, it's not going to ship in that pot. I am going to repot it into something smaller. I just don't really have the head for it right now. So it's going to be fine chilling right there until I get to it. But yes, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed hanging out with me today, you should give it a thumbs up, a dirty thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. There's a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky perks. Did you want to do it? <laughs> Dave was over there like, mocking me while I do it um if not you know there's a super thanks button if you want to super thanks me everything is appreciated cannot do this without you guys I promise I will be getting in here and sorting this out eventually I just like I don't know I genuinely don't know what to do and um the schismatoglottis same I'm just like low-key terrified of murdering it so I am going to do a little bit of research on both plants. I'll need some stuff to watch <laughs> while I'm on the plane to Tennessee. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can figure it out and not kill it because it's a beautiful plant. It's just a very thirsty plant. Um, so that's why I'm thinking if I can downsize it to fit it into here, that it would be really happy in there so anyway i'm gonna stop talking i love you guys so so very much i hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world and i will see you in the next one bye